So today I thought we'd start out by talking about what happened between Team Liquid and Navi because we got a very very weird team comp from Liquid and I'm pretty sure that this was the team comp that Sliggy was talking about who's the coach of Liquid when he said that you know there was a team comp that basically the players had picked themselves that was a bit unusual you might say and this is it because we have a no duelist bind comp and uh, let's just go go through it agent by agent right and why it was very weird so we have a solo viper controller that obviously is pretty weird now is that like you know completely terrible no but it, it isn't ideal for me either and, and a lot of teams I think would agree with me and that's for a couple reasons of course going solo viper is it possible to do that on this map Probably just about if you have like, you know, a really good plan for what you're going to do with that solo Viper. It probably is just about possible. But the reason that a lot of teams run Viper plus like a Brim or an Astra is because essentially every team uh, known to man runs this same like Viper wall plus Viper orb in here on this map because this setup is completely insane because basically what it, this setup does is basically means that you can just walk up here for free a lot of the time and then walking up to this point for free means that generally you know now your plan just has to be well how do we get from you know this choke point which is quite big you know onto site and and that's a lot easier than you know going past the smaller choke points that this map has so that's generally why you often see viper with another controller because the Viper just wants to put down that same setup every single round and pretty much every other pro team is doing that right now because that setup is so good. So obviously running solo Viper means that you can't do that because you know there's so many different things that you haven't smoked up if you only do that. You, you could never go B for instance with any smokes. So you know you can't just do that and so you have to be a lot more creative with how you're going to use Viper and you have to be a lot more patient with how you're going to use Viper as well and Team Liquid did that to be fair to them. Then we have Breach. But we have Breach with, again, no Duelist. And again, this is pretty weird in and of itself because Breach generally is kind of the agent that you think of most in terms of like just holding a Duelist's hand and going like, you know, I'll stun and then flash and you just follow it in, whether you're a Jet or a Raze or even a Neon, right? Like, I'm just going to do this from back here and then you play off my utility and you go and make the most of what I just did with my utility. That's generally what Breach is kind of, you know, known for. Uh, so to do that without a Duelist, again... Pretty pretty weird. Uh, then we have Cypher. And Cypher as a pick uh, on its own. Pretty weird because on this map generally you don't see any Sentinels to be honest. I mean maybe Sage but of the three like sort of normal Sentinels. The proper Sentinels that have you know that utility. Uh, that passive information utility. Generally you don't see any of them on this map. Uh, so it was kind of weird just to see Cypher in general. Then okay you have the Sova and the Sage. Now the Sova obviously is completely fine. That, that no big issue there. Uh, but the Sage as well kind of weird with this comp. But here's the thing. This comp to me would make a lot more sense if this Cypher was just a raise. Then I can see a clear plan for how this you know attacking side would work if the Cypher was just a raise. Because then what you're going to do is you're going to use Breach plus raise plus a Sova to try and get in on the site. You have your smokes for Viper. You have the Sage to wall up to create a safe plant because you only have the Viper for smokes. So, you know, you won't have all the smokes that you probably need. So you get a wall up for a safe plant. And then once you're in a plant, you have slows, you have shocks. If you had a raise, you'd have a grenade as well. You'd have an aftershock and you'd have the Viper mollies. And a post plant should be in favor of you. You should be able to win that post plant in that scenario. So if this Cypher was a raise, I, I could make sense of what Liquid were trying to do. But without a raise... The Breach doesn't really make sense. The Cypher doesn't really make sense anyway. The Sage makes less sense as well. Like, you know, it was kind of a bit of a weird comp overall. And we're going to see, you know, what happened in this game now and kind of go into the practical elements of it and, you know, what did end up going wrong for Liquid and how it played out. So you're probably thinking, how did Liquid attack with this comp? Well, they actually win the first six rounds on attack side with this comp, which is pretty incredible. Uh, but basically, it boiled down to a couple things. They basically dared Navi to fight them. Um, and they would either, you know, win that fight or trade off that fight a lot of the time and, you know, end up in like 4v4s or 5v4s in their favor. And then from there, you know, you can win an attacking round probably with whatever comp you want at that point. So they were doing a lot of that. They were also using like Viper Walls to kind of sneak on site, uh, which we're going to see in this round as well as we play it forward. So keep that in mind for this is basically what Liquid are doing. And then Navi take a timeout at 6-0 and everything changed after that. So... Let's take a look at this round and see how it went. So, 
here we have uh, Nevera, and this is what I'm talking about. You know, just straight dry peeking, like daring, like let's fight. You know, I will fight you. And uh, this is one that they actually lost. They are still going to win this round, though. So let's keep playing it through and see on on Earth how they managed to win this round. But as you can see, if we go to the map, because, uh, you know, we're going to have to be waiting a while. This is what happened a lot, right? A lot of, like, slow, like, map control type things, you know, taking it slow, walking it through. As we can see here, you know, they get, they baiting out the defender's utility. And, uh, okay, we get another fight. Now, Again, this is one of the times where Scream was a bit late on that fight. It's a 3v5. They still win this round. So let's see how on... Because from this point, right, it should be completely unwinnable. Scream was a bit late to try and trade that out there. Navi, by this point, have kind of realized they double swing it. They do pretty well to kill the Sova there. But somehow they still win this round. So let's play, keep playing it through and you're going to see what essentially amounts to an absolute miracle. So we get a Sova dart in shower that they avoid. Uh, and they start coming back. Two towards short and one towards shower. And eventually here, pretty soon, I'm... Yeah, we're going to get this Viper Wall. So, we're going to get this Viper Wall. Pretty weird, right? I have never... I don't think I've ever seen anyone use this Viper Wall. But obviously, the point is that it kind of cuts off all of back sight. And this is what I mean with them kind of like trying to sneak on into sight, right? Like, this Viper Wall can get you to a point where you can plant but then you don't have much space afterwards and you know you're gonna give all navi like all this space to retake for free probably and so you know a lot of teams running a more normal comp might not like this wall for that reason but liquid kind of have to do this because it's it's kind of you know their only smoke so they have to try and basically sneak on site and uh they're gonna stun stun the short where you know potentially someone could be and as you can see they're just running in for the plant at this point now they actually bait uh dunno here they basically bait him into trying to peek past this wall obviously they kind of expected that and they also sage wall this so basically you know liquid are gonna like have this little area basically you know just enough to plant in and get out safely that's what they're gonna do and this is what they were commonly doing right and then they're just gonna say well fight me you know, we're in a post plant now, just let's, let's fight. And uh, Navi are going to make some mistakes, okay? So, as we're going through this, you know, Scream here is going to eventually pick off this jet. Once this wall goes down, the jet is in heaven, as you can see up here, and dies to Scream. Now, this is a pretty big mistake by the jet. You know, his, his KO is here, his Viper is here. Like, you know, the Silver is doing the right thing and kind of being in a safe place and waiting for these other, you know, you're in a 4v3, but now it's a 3v3. A pretty big mistake by SSK there to, you know, try and just fight. Uh, particularly when you know they, for the most part, have worse guns, apart from Scream, who uh, took his head off. So let's keep playing it forward. And yeah, this, and Scream now goes for a long flank, which is also going to be really good and win in the round. Link dies here, trying to get aggressive after the Sova Dart. There's the Sage Wall coming in. You know, and JD has to waste some more time trying to destroy that. They're just going to play safe and uh, scream here with that big flank. It's going to get a res as well. And that's going to win them the round, basically. Uh, because, you know, now with Yampi there as well, and he has his utility to use, they breach stun it, they swing them. And uh, yeah, they're going to end up in this 2v1. And even though one dies there, the time obviously is ticking down. So much time is left that uh, JD has to run away and they win the round. And that's essentially how they attacked for pretty much the whole half, you know, of just running the clock down really low, like getting as much map control as they could, fighting whenever they could, right? Like just trying to bait fights as much as they could. And they won the first six rounds, but then Navi take a timeout and their coach clearly told them something which started to work. And I'm pretty sure that basically what it was is maybe just fight the choke points and don't let them through because they don't have any way of getting past them if we just fight them there. And so let's move to round seven, which is the first one that Navi won after that timeout and to show you what I mean. So we had the Viper ult here. Solcast died to like a push here from the jet. Quite clever. Just staying behind the Cypher trip there. Killed uh, one there. So they get that kill. But as you can see, Liquid have grouped up in shower and have used this Viper ult and they're going to try and get the spike down. But, and this is a big but, Navi decided no. No, you're not going to get the spike down. Even though you have this Viper ult, which is, you know, their way of getting onto site here, Navi decide, not this time. You know, now, not this time. So instead of retreating, and they even have a Sova drone here and everything, but instead of retreating, look, this Sova here, he he's not retreating. The Sage Wall goes up, SSK, not retreating, right? Like, we're not, we're not going anywhere. So even though the Sova drone comes up and dings this Sova, the Sova just spams through the wall and says, I'm not moving. 
You know, even look, his location is revealed, but he's just saying, I'm not moving. Then the Vera comes, but by now, Shock Dark comes in, the KO Nade comes in, the Viper Molly comes in. They just said, no, we're not, we're not going to move anymore. We're not m moving away and giving you sight because that is how you were winning these rounds was when we were being too passive. So they went, no, we're not moving anywhere. We're just going to spam you with utility and they end up in this 5v2. And obviously there's not much really that Link can do. And uh, eventually they're going to win the round. Now, I will also say, Yampi, as you can see here, bought an op. Which, like, I can only imagine that the Team Liquid, like, coaching staff were like, why on earth did you also buy an op? Because it just kind of compounded the extra problems that Liquid already had. And kind of showcased what the players thought that their game plan was. Oh, they'll come to us and we'll just fight them and we'll win. You know, that's what Yampi's thinking here. We'll just sit and they'll come and fight us and we'll win. And obviously, as soon as, you know, Navi kind of figured out not to do that, they started winning rounds. So let's look at another example here. There's 45 seconds left in the round, and we're about to get a breach ult here. You can see, again, that uh, Team Liquid have grouped up something again that they often did, you know, fight in numbers that we don't have that duelist to create the space for us. We're just going to go in as a big group, and they have Novara here kind of pushing Hooker. Uh, and again, we're going to get exactly what I just said before, just a bombardment of utility of you are not going to get past that choke point, even with a breach ult. So let's run it through. So the breach ult, I'm not sure who it actually catches, but either way, you can see here that there is a Molly plus a Suck right there. Uh, which is obviously going to stall them out, and Liquid don't really progress that much, even though they just breach ulted them. You can see that just a bit of utility has been able to stop them. You get another Viper Molly there. You get Dano there as well, getting a kill on screen. The first person who even tried to just get like a bit into the site dies. You get the KO Molly. You get another Viper Molly. And they just said, well, no, you know, just stay back there instead. And essentially, this is what. You know, Navi figured out, and eventually the time, as you can see, is starting to elapse here. I mean, this is a, a weird thing, you know, play, play the Phantom over the Vandal, that's why. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, they eventually, you know, there's 15 seconds left. They know that everyone's here. Uh, they have to try and find something. They do start to find some kills, but it's it's not enough, right? And eventually, again, Yampi with this op, like, <laughs> you know, just compounded their problems even more, the fact that he bought an op, and eventually he dies with it. And uh, this is what Navi did, and they figured it out. So now let's move on to the other side instead where Navi are attacking and Liquid are defending. And Liquid obviously with this team comp it is a pretty defensive comp. You know, they are going to get some, some rounds here, right, on the defensive side, as you would probably expect. But Navi is still going to end up winning this game and they don't get that many defensive rounds. They only get three. Uh, so it wasn't even that great even then. Uh, but I just want to show you some clips of why having a duelist is good. Again, I made this video yesterday, basically, of teams not picking Jet, and I just don't understand why. Let's watch uh, Let's watch Navi show us why having a duelist might be a good thing in a couple of these rounds. So here's the first one, right? This is absolutely beautiful, by the way. So we can see that Navera is posted up in here. What they're going to do is Sova Dart. They send a KO throw flash and obviously the jet is getting up there right so what's the idea behind this well even though they haven't used the jet dash yet what well, what's gonna happen is he gets pinged you can see he's completely blind and uh well any reaction from liquid is denied by the fact that the jet can just dash away smoke dash out gone one player down and again navi were able to convert this round but that little like I guess you would call it like a mini execute, like on that little bit of the map, you know, found them a kill. The jet is able to live. You're in a 5v4. Everything is good. No trade is available. That's what those duelists are there for, right? That's, that's the key reason that they're there. You know, this is what the power of jet, no trade, no trade for you. You know, even with the breach done and all of that, no trade for you, perfectly executed by Navi. And now let's look at a different round as well, where they're going to end up winning with a full execute. So here we go. Round 17. It's a uh, Navi nine to seven. They haven't lost uh, around yet on this half and what we're going to see is a KO ult from here which obviously is going to get a big radius and pretty much catch everyone on this B site so that's pretty helpful just the power of KO and then we're going to get you know some attack up here as well and uh, let's just run it through because this is a really cool execute and it's it's pretty well played by Navi in general uh, some mistakes thrown in there as well by Liquid uh, which we'll talk about but there you go Navera first off gets suppressed here he's in gardens right Link, his friend, does him a favor, gives him this wall. I have no idea why Navera doesn't run back past the wall, but for whatever reason, after being pinged and them knowing that he's there, he decides to just stay. I have literally no idea why he did that. 
the suppress is still coming through. Obviously, you get the knife onto the site as well. And so now, you know, Yampi's in this spot. But as we can see, we get the jet dash, the flash, perfectly timed. Um, and we're also going to about to get a Sova Dart here on site as well. There it is. As you can see, Sova Dart here. And obviously, that's going to ping Yampi here, who is in a lot of trouble. Um, but if we just run this through now, you'll see what I mean. We have Solkas here though as well. And Solkas is able to get one, but he gets traded out. And here is the thing. And in fact, let's just play it through first. So we still got Scream here back site, but as you see, SSK with his jet updraft, able to see him and they overwhelm him, right? Let's just go back though to that Solkas kill as well, because we will have to watch the map for it, I think. But as the jet has got on site here, uh, what's going to happen is the jet, I'm pretty sure, as they dashed across, saw Solkas was there in elbow. Uh, so what you're going to get is, as you can see, these people are starting to fight towards elbow. The, the Viper tried to peek here as well. And the jet is also going to come back. And you can see fighting elbow, right? I'm pretty sure that the jet saw him on that dash, saw that someone was elbow, and they tried to just fight him and they get a one for one trade, which is absolutely perfectly fine, right? No problem with that at all. Really well played. Again, this is the point of Duelist, that you can do something like that. They can spot someone and be like, oh, there's someone there as well. The Sova Dar obviously spots someone as well. And information at this level is just so key. That's why Sova's pretty good. Uh, and yeah, the jet dashed into the smoke. Jet stays safe and then is able to swing Solcast from two angles. The Sova and the Astra can come from this way and the jet can come from that way. And Solcast can't do anything. He does basically the maximum he could have done, which is get one kill. And then... Obviously, as we play this forward, Jet's then able to get more information by doing this updraft. And obviously, Scream, like, you know, you aren't going to hit that shot because that's like, even Scream can't hit that shot, right? And now Scream is just panicking and now he's in a 1v4 and dies. Like, this is the advantage of playing a Duelist. And a lot of teams just decided this week that to just, just troll and not play the best agent in the game or at least any Duelist. So now let's take a look at round number 23. And this is one of the weirdest rounds that you will ever see in a game of Valorant. Just an absolute crazy round where Liquid make... I mean, they're going to make a pretty big mistake off the start, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but let's just watch what happens anyway. So we have uh, this Viper ult here in Shower, obviously stopping a lot of progress towards that. I don't think you'd ever want to go towards that because it's so deadly. Um, and they have three players here and they've actually walled that off as well. So basically giving themselves the time to prepare and think about this, that they're going to take this TP. And as you can see, there's a lot of Navi players in that area. But if you just come to the normal mode here, what you're going to see is that they have a Brim ult here also. They also have the Sage ult, which they're going to use. Um, but I'm pretty sure as we watch this through, I'm pretty sure that the Solkas is meant to ult here, but he just goes too quick and dies. Now they do get the trade from Scream, but I don't... I, I, I don't know, like, I guess it all just happened a bit too quick for him. As I say, they get the res. I mean, I'm not showing you this for any other reason than it's just super weird. I mean, then they get this silver ult, right? And it's like, what can you do? They both die there. Then you, as you can see, you're getting some aggression here from the other two players on, on Liquid as well. So you're getting aggression from them too. Um... And, you know, they end up, Link gets, ends up getting two kills. Then Navera is sitting here, and this is, this is one of the weirdest, and, and, like, at the time, I was thinking, oh, if they walk past this corner, like, they're doomed, right? It's a 3v2 at this point. But then he does that, and, like, the timing is really unfortunate for him to have to do that. But he does get away, so, okay, it's a 2v3 at this point. One of the craziest starts to a round I've ever seen. I mean, it was a cool idea by Liquid, right? But, obviously, the execution wasn't, wasn't great. Um, and then Link peeks that, dies... And uh, as we play this forward, and, and probably Navi are like, what is going on at this point, right? Like, what what is what is happening in this round? Uh, well, then Navera is going to end up here in a, in a 2v1, of course, in this scenario. The Silvers are all the way on the other side. Uh, does get one, tries to ult, dies. Like, you know, for some reason doesn't expect that maybe a second player might be there. But either way, now... Now, now Tinks here is in like a super weird position because this server could literally be anywhere on the map, like literally anywhere. And there's only 13 seconds left. So he has to try and plant. He sees Yampi there, but now he's going to get pinged three times. <laughs> and so Yampi shock darts him. And then Yampi pulls out his pistol, which is correct because he knows that he's hitting with the shock dart. So he knows that a right click will probably kill him. But then you get this. Like one of the weirdest rounds I've ever seen. And uh, Navi come away with the win. And uh, yeah, Liquid. And we're going to do a, a little series here of troll comps on maps. 
Uh, but this was the first one, and Liquid actually ended up doing the best from the troll comps that I saw yesterday. Uh, but still, you know, j just pick Rays. And the thing is, Soulcast played Rays in the next map and did really well. So it's not like they don't have anyone that can play Rays either. Like, but just, just next time, Liquid, just play Rays.